Hey friends, Dylan Bates here at the Final Cut Bro. This video is sponsored by FX Factory. Thank you so much, FX Factory. Today I get to show you a really amazing plugin called Awesome Importers. It helps so much when you're working with graphics in Final Cut. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So the first item on this list is the GIF importer. It's GIFs, I looked it up. The creator says it's GIFs, not GIFs, so. There you go. You can bring them in and they will play just fine in Final Cut Pro. If you want to slow it down, you can also retime it with Command R. But what gets frustrating is a lot of the time with a GIF, you want it to repeat over and over again. So you could option click and drag and duplicate this clip a whole bunch of times, but things just get messy. So what I love is the GIF importer. We'll go into our generators here and we'll bring in our GIF importer here and we can locate the GIF that we want to use. So already we've got the GIF. We've got the scaling options here. So those are directly on the GIF. You'll see that it's going really, really fast. It's also repeating over and over. So if we want, we can set this to an exact duration. So say we want the GIF to last exactly five seconds. We can type that into the duration settings and now this GIF will be much slower. We can set the playback for it to play just once. So if you want it to only play through one time and then pause when it's all done, you can totally do that. And then also we can go to loop, we can go to ping pong, so if you want it to play forwards and then reverse when it's done, and I might change the timing on this so it's much faster, so you can see it's playing forward and then backwards. You can also enable some easing, so it will start off a little bit slower, speed up into the normal speed, and then slow down again. So you can totally enable that. You can flip it, or you can flop it to reverse how it looks. And you can also quickly add an outline to it. You'll see, let me change the color of the outline so you can see that, so that it's got this nice red border around it, along with the ability to round the corners. You can crop it in if you need to. So you could crop it just like that, and you'll see it keeps that outline, which is really nice along with setting the width of your outline and the offset so that's all fully controllable here within the gif importer so that is super nice for quickly working with gifs and it's so nice to be able to extend this out as long as you need it to be appearing there so you can add in all those fantastic memes into your video the next element is the image sequence importer. So we can again locate in the directory. We can go into, I have a Bay of Angels time lapse here I took years ago. It will automatically bring in this time lapse for me. And then you can also set the scale all together here. You can grab these on screen controls, move this around independently. You can change the fit method. So you could change it to fit. It will fit the entire image sequence into this area, or you can set it to fill, so it will zoom in just so it cuts off those black edges on the side, and then you've got stretch, and again, you have all of these additional options. One that I really like is this aspect ratio. So if you wanted to do some anamorphic stuff, you could definitely do that. You can flip and flop it once again. You can also reverse it. So if you want it to start the other direction, that's really nice. And it's really great that you don't have to jump into other software to create a time lapse. So normally you'd have to jump into something like QuickTime or you would have to jump into motion. But now you don't need to bother with either of those options. And it also saves you from having hundreds of thousands of photos in your library here, um, which is just always very cluttery. So I really like those two features especially. And then you can also set the exact duration. You can set a custom duration. So if you wanted this to be a two second time lapse, you can totally do that. You can also, just like with the GIF, you can change the repeat mode. So you could have it loop. So when once it's played through once, it restarts and keeps going. You can also have it ping pong, which is really nice. So you just play that back and uh, it's playing off of a slow drive. So unfortunately it's going kind of slow. Another feature I didn't know I wanted, but it's really cool is you can change the interpolation. So what's really cool about this is you can very dynamically change how your image sequence looks. So you can almost make it like the sun is bouncing or something like that by using these different animation types. So that's the image sequence importer. Let's move on to the vector importer. So the interesting thing with Final Cut Pro is when you bring in a PDF that has multiple pages, it'll just play it through like an animation. So you've got all three of these different angles of their logo, which is, 
you know, that's one way to work with it. But what's frustrating is this white background doesn't exist in the file normally. It's normally an alpha channel. And so I really wanted the alpha channel on this particular logo to be here, but I couldn't do that. So I had to go through all these extra hoops to create a PNG and do all of that just so I could get an alpha channel based logo in here. So that is where Awesome Importers comes in. So we'll bring in our vector importer. We'll select that and then we'll just jump into our folder here and we'll locate the PDF file that we want to use. So you'll see this works with Adobe Illustrator files or PDFs, which is a huge win. It just saves you extra steps. You don't even need to have Adobe Illustrator for this to work, which is excellent. And you'll see it's got the one logo that's on its side. If I wanted the center logo, page two, we'll just change the artboard page. And so now I have the logo where I need it. Then if I wanna scale this up, I'm gonna go a little bit extreme just so you can really see this working. So it's way zoomed in and you'll notice that the edges are not cleaned up. They look very pixelated. So what you can do is go in here to the resolution prescale and drag that up till your logo is nice and clean. The zoom in scale, I went so extreme, it's going to take a little bit of time to load, but it does work. Um, and then once it figures itself out, it's much smoother. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. But it's really, really nice to have vector graphics directly within Final Cut Pro. If you wanna do something like this in motion, you can, but it, again, it's having to go into another piece of software and this just helps you stay within Final Cut Pro, stay in your flow, so that is a huge win. Not only that, but it has these other features like quick colorize, which is really nice. So let's say, oh man, I want this logo to be white. I can drag up the quick colorize and so now this logo is white and I can change the color of it very easily. Additionally, if you want it to be outlined, you can totally do that. So we'll just drag up the quick outline amount and we can change the color of that to be red so we can totally see the logo here. Now this is looking quite hideous, but you know, you get the idea. You can drag up the width and you can also drag up the offset. So now this logo has this outline going for it and it's all a vector graphic fully within Final Cut Pro with just a few clicks. So this particular plugin does have a couple extra features which are actually completely free. So you can download the trial of this plugin from FX Factory to try it, but there's two particular effects that will come in for free, which is a big win. So if you go into your titles here, you'll see the frame counter. Now this is helpful for adding a watermark in or something along those lines. Um, sometimes with clients you need exact frames. Uh, so this is a great way to throw that in. So you've got this frame counter along with the bit scaler. So I will bring in an 8-bit graphic here and what you're going to need to do so you'll see if I scale this up like crazy, there's this soft edge on the PNG. Now, normally you wouldn't need to scale it up this much, but sometimes you're not getting files that are of this resolution. So the first step I need to take is to change the spatial conform. So I'll change that over to none. Then from there, I'm going to right click, create a new compound clip. So we'll go ahead and do that. Then after that, I'm going to drag on the bit scaler. And again, this is completely free, so there's no reason not to use this. So now I can scale this up like crazy. We are at 15,000% scaling. And you'll see after it took a moment, it cleaned up this line. So again, here's without. So here you can see the edges are really soft. I enable bit scaler and just like that, it's cleaned up the edges. So that's just a handy bonus plugin that comes with the awesome importers. So that's just always nice to get a little bit more bang for your buck. So that's basically awesome importers in a nutshell. It's definitely more of a niche product, but I find it very, very useful for my personal workflow and you might too. If you are interested in this plugin, make sure you hit up the link in the description. It is an affiliate link, so it does help me out a lot. And also use code the Final Cut Bro to get 10% off. Thanks so much for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next one.